A FOX BUSINESS ALERT. MORE BAD NEWS FOR HOUSING. THE LATEST CASE SHILLER REPORT SHOWING HOME PRICES DROPPING MORE THAN FORECAST ON AN ANNUAL BASIS WITH 19 OUT OF 20 MAJOR METROPOLITAN MARKETS SEEING DECLINES IN OCTOBER. OUR NEXT GUEST, are REAL ESTATE EXPERTS WHO SAY ALL THE GOVERNMENT EFFORTS TO HELP BOOST HOUSING ARE JUST MAKING THINGS WORSE. CONNIE DEGROOT IS A REALTOR IN BEVERLY HILLS AND DAVID LICKEN RUNS MORTGAGE BANKING SOLUTIONS IN TEXAS. SO DAVID, IT COMES DOWN TO A BASIC QUESTION. I THINK IT DOES ANYWAY. Who should really take the majority of risk in housing? Should it be the person buying the house or should it be taxpayers? Because increasingly, taxpayers are the ones taking the risk, thanks to the government, right? That's absolutely right, David. We've got to stop putting this risk over on the taxpayers. More importantly, the, the government's got to quit putting the taxpayers in this position where they're backstopping all of this. The borrower, the guy that bought the home, is the one that should bear the consequences of that decision. Connie, you agree? I do agree. I, I also think that we've made a lot of mistakes by putting people into a home when if they walked away, they weren't really losing much. Uh, we did a, made a lot of mistakes, but moving forward, some of the new regulations with financing has actually made it a lot more difficult for well-qualified people to purchase a home. So that's the problem that I face right now. I'm working with somebody for three months that they're, they're trying to get a loan, and because they switched jobs three times in one year because the companies went under, right. um, and they still and they're well qualified, good credit, and they're making they're earning a, a, enough money to qualify, but because of the changing of jobs, they can't get a loan. Well, Connie, let, let so, me put it to you this way, because we've argued about whether or not the government should be insuring big loans of seven hundred thousand yeah. uh, dollars. Would you be willing to sacrifice that? Lower the amount of money that the government guarantees on the FA, on these FHA loans for the sake of making the the regulations a little easier to deal with. I think that people should be putting down a significant amount, uh, upwards closer to around 20 percent. I think that the regulations, as far as like being credit worthy and having a nice debt to loan ratio, um, I think that those things will mean that these risks. As they were years prior, will be better risk. Okay, but you're safer. not answering the question, Connie. Uh, would you no, be willing to sacrifice <laughs> the the more regulations for the sake of these guarantees? I don't think the government should be guaranteeing anywhere near seven hundred thousand dollars on a loan. I, well, I I agree. I, I mean, we're in a mess, but it's also going to take a little bit of time to unravel this. So we're yeah. it's, we're not going to get out of this overnight. We're going to. But but I but I'm telling you there are there's overregulation right now. Instead of giving money to everybody, yeah. no, we're making it very hard for and people I, to And I I agree forward. with you, and I think David agrees with you. But David, I've had arguments with Connie before about whether we should have these guarantees on FHA loans of seven hundred thousand dollars. I never bought a home for over four hundred thousand dollars. Call me cheap, but that's just me, and I, I I'm a pretty wealthy guy. Why should the government should be helping those who are who are trying to get their first house? I don't think it should go much further that's than right. that. Do you? That's right, David. No, that's exactly right. Let's help the first time home buyer. They're the ones that are going to stimulate the housing industry, allow the people to move up and help that. Connie's got a unique situation out in her particular market because of the price of housing out there. And so I understand the argument, but the reality is let's keep it to helping first time home buyers. And right. sometimes the first time home buyers out in that market may be $700,000 buyers, but no, let's not help that level. And Connie, that frankly, level. if you're a first time home buyer that's thinking of $700,000 on a house, maybe you should be renting. Well, in L.A., as I said to you before, when we had that big, long argument, you said, oh, you know, rent. Well, yeah, yeah okay, maybe rent, but rents are going up. I'm just, of course I just they put are, a house into escrow. Of course they are, but not up to $700,000. Yes, they are. I put one into escrow, almost 900000 and I worked it out, and it was actually cheaper to buy the house than rent. And this is on the west side of Los Angeles. David, Kansas. you buy that? So things have... Well, I'll tell you, they're what going we're up. Rents are the definitely paint. going up. Okay, David, go ahead. Last Rent, word. Rents are rent, rents are going up on this, David. And I think one of the things is when we see the rents continue to go up, prices continue to fall. It's going to create that's a, that's a self-correcting problem. To Connie's point, some of those people are going to come back yeah. back and be buyers, and that's By the what way, we need. We're yeah. getting. Go ahead, finish we're your point. We're getting close to the bottom, David. You know, we're you getting know. close to the bottom, David, and we need as many people buying as we can right now. You know what else they're, is going up, by the way, to. gang, is taxes. <laughs> taxes are going up as well, and when you're paying for all that maintenance and you're paying for higher taxes, I don't know. Home buying just doesn't seem as good as it used to be. Guys, we've got to leave it at that. David Lincoln, Connie DeGroote, good to see you both. Coming up next, we're going to tell you.